In this tutorial, we're going to bypass a form with reCAPTCHA v2 that has obfuscated or scrambled JavaScript code, which is very hard to debug. Note that the principles in this tutorial are also applicable to hCAPTCHA, which has the same API. Let's first trace how the token is submitted. Upon solving the puzzle, it is posted to this URL. If we switch to the Initiator tab and try to see the place where it was posted to the back end, we'll see this unreadable code. So, how do we read and debug it? The answer is, we don't do that. Let's navigate to the reCAPTCHA v2 official documentation and learn how it is initiated on the page. If we scroll down, we'll see the reCAPTCHA.render method, which takes two arguments, the ID of a container and an object with parameters. If we click on the parameters link, we can see the list of them, and we're interested in the callback function which is executed when reCAPTCHA is solved. This function can also be an anonymous, so-called function without a declared name. If you're not familiar with the concept of anonymous functions, here's a quick explanation. Here's a function with a name, and here's an anonymous function that returns the text some result. It has no name and is called when the parent code is executed. Our idea here is to block the real reCAPTCHA widget from loading and replace this reCAPTCHA object with our own object by using a script injection into the window object. Our code will mimic the reCAPTCHA.render function and accept the same set of parameters. When the target page calls this render function, it will provide the callback function, which we will catch here and call after we solve a reCAPTCHA token. So. How do we prevent reCAPTCHA from loading from this API.js script and inject our own code? We'll again use Puppeteer for this task, an open source solution for browser automation. Let's copy the code from the previous tutorial. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend watching the previous two tutorials to gradually build an understanding of the techniques we use here. We switch to ChatGPT and ask how to do what we want to do, with Puppeteer and Node.js, how do we prevent loading from a URL with address? and we copy the actual address. In the answer we see that we should use set request interception method and subscribe to request events where we compare each URL with that API.js, and if it matches, then we abort this request. Let's copy this piece of code and paste it before the code that opens the page. Instead of waiting for the page to fully load all resources, we should only wait until the first HTML is rendered so that no page scripts are run yet. Right after this line, we'll write our injection code. I'm using the page.evaluate method, which runs any code on the page and probably uses the standard eval function. Inside this block, our magic happens. Jira CAPTCHA is globally available object, and it is declared this way. We use the window object and set its new property Jira CAPTCHA to a new object. Inside this object, we declare the render function. Let's switch back to the reCAPTCHA documentation and see its description. Here we have two arguments, container and parameters object. We'll just copy these and paste them into our code. Let's add an output to the console when this function is called and print these arguments. Our goal is to catch the callback function, and in the reCAPTCHA documentation, it is sent inside the parameters object argument. And here's how we copy this function to a namespace in order to use it later. In the window object, we set a new property, let's call it callback copy, and its value will be the callback function from the parameters object. So now this window.callback copy holds our function, and we'll use it the same way as we did in the previous tutorial. We just run it when it is time to execute the callback function with the reCAPTCHA token as an argument. Yep, like this. And let's make final adjustments and set the proper page addresses and the site key. Copy the page address and paste it into both Puppeteer's navigate function and the anti-CAPTCHA API call. To set the proper site key, use the same trick as we did before. Find a request with the name anchor and copy the K value. Let's also ask Puppeteer to open the browser window to see what is happening and open the developer tools automatically when a new page is opened. That's it. Let's save the file and run it.
Switching to the console tab to see the console.log outputs, you can see that our injection code worked and printed the container name and parameters object. Inside this object is our target callback function. And it worked. The token was submitted to the backend and successfully verified. In the next tutorial, we'll learn how to submit form with Invisible Recaptcha V3. Stay tuned.